He would not have to go far to see the Nicaraguan wonders around him, his guidebook informed him. There was a live smoking volcano right on the outskirts of town that anyone could visit and witness, no special permits necessary, and no volcanic equipment either, because it wasn't going to explode in anyone's face, and lots of people lived all around it and walked over it every day and planted their corn on it, and they didn't have to wear any special hats or protective goggles. And on top of having a live smoking volcano, they had earthquakes too, and everybody had to hold on to their hats, or they could topple over like plastic army men, and you didn't see them complaining. To witness this special volcanic event, all one had to do was take a bus or a taxi, ride up the volcanic slant, observe the billows of smoke that rise from the pit of the earth, have one's moment of fear or awe or existential crisis in the bit of in the face of this bit of torn up planet, then get back in the transport and return to the hotel. This is a fine adventure, and many others are available as well, but one has to choose, one always must. And, a few blocks from where his feet now rested, was Nicaragua's very own indoor climate-controlled shopping mall, built in the happy tradition of Victor Gruen, a confirmation of Nicaragua's social and aesthetic alignment with the modern. The guidebook had an impressive list of items Myers could purchase and take back to his country, and had a photograph of the escalator he could ride and of the food court he'd reach at the top. He could see it for himself if he followed the little map over the sidewalks and through the labyrinth of traffic. Who knew what awaited him on the other side of the street if only he'd step across? And there's no sense in acting like a snob about it, acting like you're going to come all the way here and not want to shop, no sense in that, because everyone knows that everyone wants to shop, no matter where, who you are or where you're from, everyone wants to, everyone. What else did you come all the way here for if not to seize and take back what you also have at home? The country also fe- featured any number of volunteers at any given time. These volunteers, not unlike Santa's elves, hailed from Meyer's very own country as well as from helpful guilt-ridden European ones such as Germany. He could observe these volunteers in a wild habitat location and witness their good works for himself. The country was stuffed with these people, frankly, so much so that sometimes they couldn't quite fit and had to be tied together with bamboo rope and sent home on a raft. But this year, the country had just the right amount of volunteers, and you could glimpse them from several vantage points, taking a break from their labors of latrine digging and stair building, or from making their solemn advisements in regards to matters of business, religion, child care, gardening, and diplomacy. The Nicaraguans are careful with them. They don't burn the volunteers by leaving them out too long in the sun or drown them by throwing them into the sea. They don't place them under a mango tree because a piece of fruit could fall on their heads and knock them over. They don't lock the volunteers out in the rain or accidentally run them over with their trucks. They feed them every day and encourage them to propagate among themselves. The Nicaraguans don't say things like, What do you think, that we can't perfectly well dig our own toilets? Get out of the way, would you? Go build your stairs over there where no one will trip on them for Pete's sake. They never say that, because it's not easy out there for the volunteers with only their little sewing machines and toy shovels to work with. Besides, it's nice to have them around. It's a lot better than getting exploded by hundred-pound bombs. It's a lot better than getting smeared into vapors in the air.